Hey guys, today we're gonna learn how to purify water using science. One of the most common and easiest ways to purify water is to boil it. Now, uh, this may take a little while. I just tripped the breaker. That's a problem. Anyways, boiling water is so common because it works so well. In a city where a water supply may be contaminated, the city will order its residents to boil water before consuming. Bringing water to just 150 degrees Fahrenheit for five minutes kills 99.999% of all pathogens. But there still are a few issues. First, water is going to be really, really hot after boiling. That's kind of the point, but it's not exactly ideal for drinking. Also, boiling does nothing to get rid of sediments that may be inside the water. In fact, boiling it can even make it more concentrated. So while it's fine if you're boiling tap water, if you're boiling really dirty water from a stream, for instance, it can make the whole thing worse. Finally, boiling water also uses up a lot of energy, apparently more than my power outlet can supply. It also can take quite a while to get that water up to boiling. This next method uses evaporation. Now there are tons and tons of variations of this, but in this case, we're gonna take a small dish and put it in the middle of the pot. Then we're gonna take the lid and place it face down on top of the pot. And the idea behind this is that if we heat it up on the stove or just leave it outside, then all of that water is gonna evaporate and condense on the lid. And then since it's curved in, it should all be concentrated into that dish and drop in there. And what's in there should theoretically just be pure water. However, this method can take forever and still only produce a little bit of water. Also, while when the water evaporates, it'll leave behind all the pathogens and sediments, certain chemicals may be able to evaporate and condense with the water, meaning that even though the water may be free of pathogens, it still might have some harmful chemicals in it. The most common method of water purification is using chemicals, namely chlorine, which you can find in household bleach. It is a violation of federal law to use this product in a manner inconsistent with its labeling. So I think that pretty much means don't try this at home. With that being said, let's drink some bleach. Now, according to the CDC, before we put any bleach in the water, first we have to clear it of all debris, which is something that chemicals alone don't do. And this adds an extra step to the purification process. So here I have a coffee filter that we'll use to filter out most of the contaminants. And uh, if you may have noticed, this isn't exactly the fastest process in the world. So after quite a while, we've finally gotten most of the debris out of the water. And uh, the CDC recommends two drops for every quart of water. And since this is one cup, or a quarter of a quart, we should only need half a drop, but uh, I think one drop will be fine. Okay. So the CDC also recommends that you let the water stand for 30 minutes before drinking. So uh, I'll see you in 30 minutes. So it's been 30 minutes and it's time to now try the hopefully purified water. So uh, the reason that chlorine is used so much in purifying water is because it's really good at killing microorganisms. That's why we use it as a cleaning product. But if it's really good at killing organisms, it's probably not super good for us either. Um, whew, it also does not smell very good, but uh, let's try it. Cheers. Oh, okay. So it pretty much tastes like pool water, except for you add a bunch of dirt into it, which isn't, you know, the ideal taste. Um, but as long as I don't get sick, I guess I'll be happy. I mean, it would work, but I don't know if it's really the best option. But by and far, the best way to filter water is using a personal water filter, like this one made by Oakleaf, who's kind enough to sponsor this video. Filters like this are able to filter out 99.99% of bacteria, cysts, and spores, as well as filtering out virtually all physical contaminants. Not only is it compact, unlike the other methods of water purification we saw earlier, but it's also reusable. And that's all thanks to its three-stage design. First, if we look at the base of the filter, we can see this little cap, 
which is actually removable and comes with a replacement to further the life of the filter even more. This tiny little cap actually contains the first two stages of this filter, the cotton pre-filter and the activated charcoal filter. Now the cotton's job is simple, but still really important. It blocks out most dirt and other physical contaminants, which as we saw earlier with the coffee filters was a pain in the butt. In the second stage, the activated charcoal filter removes toxins and helps improve the taste. You see, activated charcoal is full of these tiny little pores. Just one gram of this stuff has a surface area of over 32,000 square feet. So all those little pores help trap chemicals and other toxins. This stuff also has a slight negative electrical charge, which helps grab onto toxins as they're moving by. Now the third and final stage is the most important, and this is where most of the magic happens. So if you look closely inside of the filter, we can see these little string-like things, and these are actually hollow fiber membranes. These tubes have extremely tiny pores that filter out particles up to one-tenth of a micrometer. Now to get a sense of how small this really is, just one micrometer is one one thousandth of a millimeter. And this stuff can filter things out that is just one one hundredth of that. If we take off the top of the filter, we can actually see the ends of these hollow fibers and see that they're a lot like straws, almost like this model that I made out of PVC. Except for this model is not at all to scale. If this PVC pipe were of the same scale as those hollow fiber membranes, then these holes would be 2,500 times smaller, or just one-tenth the width of a human hair. On the actual fibers themselves, the pores are so tiny that they form what's known as a semi-permeable membrane. These semi-permeable membranes allow some molecules to go in, like in this case, water, while keeping most other molecules, like the bacteria and a lot of those other pathogens, out. So that being said, let's uh, actually try this. So here we have some really quite dirty water. You don't have to do anything to it, just take out the uh, thing and start drinking from it. It really doesn't taste bad at all. This water doesn't really have any of the taste of dirt in it. To be honest, I really couldn't tell the difference between this and tap water. So if you're looking for an easy and effective way to filter water for hiking, camping, or even survival, I would highly recommend the Personal Water Filter by Oakleaf. Uh, it's really a great product as we've seen out of all these methods, it's clearly the best. So there's a link in the description and I would highly recommend that you go check them out. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed creating this video, then please leave a like or subscribe. Thanks.